full swing with my project completion. And what I'm about to tackle is my much in need of an overhaul island top. I purchased this island from Ikea about two years ago. I knew when I bought it that it wasn't solid wood but made of that pressed particle board. And if you know anything about pressed particle board, once any type of liquid comes in contact with it, it will raise and bubble. And that's what happened to my island top. So I've been thinking of some ways to cover it up. I thought about stainless steel, but after calling the metal fabricators and getting a quote for $269, well, y'all know that's not gonna happen. But then I got to thinking maybe I could tile my island. But after doing my backsplash and cutting all those tiles by hand and not really knowing how to use a wet saw, pass. I even thought about painting the island top. But y'all know that I live in a house with other people and I know that they will soon forget that the top is painted. But then the light bulb went off. I have a project that I'm going to be doing the, around the first part of next year and it's going to be using the large stick tiles. Why not try to use those tiles on my island? They're big, they're reasonably priced, and they will cover a lot of space. And these tiles are looking more and more like stone every day. So guys, for about $15, I'm gonna hack my Ikea Island and add a faux stone top using stick tiles. So let's get started. But first, here's a list of the supplies that you'll need. A marker, a pencil, tape measurer, optional soft tape measurer, a straight ruler, a large paintbrush to apply glue, a small paintbrush, paint for the raw edges and also to tint your caulk, painter's caulk, adhesive, this is left from my flooring job, or even this adhesive for reinforcement, a razor blade cutter with additional blades, a power sander with 60 to 80 grit sandpaper, a medium sanding block, cloth to remove the dust, the 18 by 18 sticky vinyl tiles, safety glasses, and a mask. First you want to measure the width, the length, and the edges of the island. And write down your measurements. Now you want to arrange the tiles for the best layout to look like stone. With the layout set, mark the back of each tile so that the placement isn't lost. Since the tiles have to be cut to fit the island, start with the center tile and work your way out. Mark the top to remember measured placement of center tile. I'm starting on the back with the first cut to better see my guideline, but after the first cut, every other cut will be done on the face side of the tile. Then you want to periodically mark the measurements down the tile with the dots. This helps to create a better straight line. Now with your established dots, you can draw the straight line. So I'm measuring and cutting those pieces first for my extra piece of tile. I'm using the straight edge to help start the first score into the tile. Working from the back makes it hard to cut through the skin, but you don't want to mark up the tile with the Sharpie. It's hard to come off. Now that my edge template piece is established, it's time to sand down all of those bubbles for a smooth, flat contact surface. Sand the entire surface and include the edges. Then you want to wipe down all of the dust. Reposition the center top tile. I still can see a little bit of my mark. Mark with the pencil where to cut off the excess, but still leaving enough overhang on both ends of the top center tile. Let's measure the amount and mark with the pencil down the tile again, creating a more accurate straight line. Reposition the tile and mark the position with a razor before applying the tiles to the edge. I always like to do an edge test fit first before cutting the top tile. You want the tile on top of the island to overhang the pieces on the edges to create a nice finished box. The tiles are already sticky on the back so I'm going to test a piece to make sure that my drawers will still open and close. I have to trim a little more off of this one. The rule is measure twice and cut once and sometimes you need to measure three times. 
So now I'm going to cut my pieces from the original template. After marking how much needs to be trimmed off, starting on the front side of your center tile, mark using dots to form a straight line. Connect the dots using a pencil. I'm checking again for accuracy before trimming the excess of the center top tile. Using your straight edge ruler, make your score into the tile. After that, you'll only have to score maybe two times if your blade is sharp. This stuff snaps easily once you break through the top skin. Make sure you score all the way through the paper on the back. And this is the template piece to cut the additional top tiles. So it's all about measuring, cutting, and gluing. Now that we're done with the tile application, sometimes the tiles can have sharp edges. So you'll want to sand them down gently with a medium sanding block. After sanding, wipe off any dust. You want to fill any cracks or gaps so that water doesn't get up underneath the tiles to lift them. I'm just tinting my painter's caulk that I'm going to put in the cracks. This goes so much better using your finger. And you can tint your painter's caulk with any paint color that's going to match your tile. I'm using my kitchen wall color because it was a very good match. And now you just want to take a little bit of your paint and touch up those raw edges. Just makes it look better. You want to make sure that you wipe up all of the excess off of the tile. And guys, there you have it. My IKEA Island with its new faux stone top. If you like this transformation, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, you're just a moment away to becoming part of my fam. So hit that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, I got nothing but hugs and love for you. And until the next video.